a crisis of leadership. We've been talking about this all week. But what if there was some sort of outer space crisis? An alien invasion sounds crazy, perhaps. If aliens invaded, who would step up to lead us in that fight, and could we even win? Think of how all the differences among people on Earth would seem small if we felt threatened by a space invader. Our government is going to uh, uh, stage some kind of a UFO landing and it's going to frighten everybody and all the nations will come together and collectively come together as a trick. Like a war of the worlds. Yeah, like a war of the worlds. Right. It's all going to be a trick, he thinks. Right. It's all going to be planned. During the Watergate investigation, it was discovered that there was a plan uh, originated in the White House to uh, surface a submarine off the coast of Cuba and paint the second coming of Christ over the island of Cuba using holograms, oh, and, yeah. which is well within our technology today. The technology necessary to project three-dimensional images to a point in space requires no new breakthroughs in science. We have the technology, a specific system development we really can't talk about. The idea was that since there is a large Catholic population in Cuba, they would be so upset by this vision that this would saturate the communication channels, you know, the telephone system in Cuba, long enough for an invasion to take place. How interesting. I never heard of that. Well, I think that's, uh, you know, a classic in psychological warfare, but mm -hmm. that kind of uh, manipulation is, is well understood. And I have personally investigated several apparently you know, genuine UFO cases where there was in fact many my, my conclusion the conclusion of scientists working with me was that there was in fact a manipulation taking place and that it was not a hoax on the part of the witnesses but a hoax on the part of somebody much better organized test facilities like Fort Huachuca in Arizona are electrical optical test beds and part of what they're testing are the effects of these electro-optical devices on a target population. In December 1915, the New York Times reported that the inventor, Nikola Tesla, had filed patent applications on the essential parts of a machine, possibilities of which test a layman's imagination and promise a parallel of Thor shooting thunderbolts from the sky. Suffice it to say that the invention will go through space with the speed of 300 miles per second. A manless ship without propelling engine or wings sent by electricity to any desired point on the globe on its errand of destruction, if destruction its manipulator wishes to effect. NASA's Project Bluebeam, which seems to be a potential umbrella of technology that will be used in manufacturing of end times, signs and wonders. Many have spoken of this project in particular, but mostly focusing on the holographic aspects of the technology. First of all, Project Bluebeam goes way back, even beyond the 1980s. This is a long tweak technology, but according to sources, this was officially launched into public practice as of the early 1980s. It was then partially declassified in the 90s. The largest hype surrounding this controversial project would be the plans to use its technology in the manufacturing of a worldwide alien invasion. I couldn't help but say to him, just think how easy his task and mine might be in these meetings that we held if suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet uh, outside in the universe. This would utilize NASA satellites to project giant hologram images over the skies of every major city simulating aliens invading the earth. This would potentially result in the world coming together in unity as a global citizenship under a new world order. We'd forget all the little local differences that we have between our countries and we would find out once and for all that we really are all human beings here on this earth together. Well, for the UN to have a global government, they'll need a global boogeyman. And the, um, the global warming thing kind of got debunked. If you've noticed, there's mm -hmm. more and more coming out in the news now about aliens. Uh, yeah. Alien contact. The, the UN has appointed a delegate for when there's alien contact. Even Fox News, one of the most conservative news um, you know, channels, is doing stories about alien contact on occasion now that that you know five ten years ago you've never seen on Fox News. Um, yeah. That's all part of conditioning to uh, eventually that the Project Blue Beam uh, alien contact will be what 
what gives us the, the feeling that we need a global government to come to combat the alien invasion. And I can foresee that that happening here relatively quickly in the future. A spiral that appeared over northern Norway a couple of uh, winters ago. And this was a um, revelation of the Blue Beam project as transmitted from satellites in orbit. That technology is accomplished uh, through cameras and lenses um, and actually using three different beams focused on the same point which create a multi-dimensional image that looks very real and you can even make them move and you can even uh, create uh, religious figures uh, in the sky that will actually speak to you in your mind using mind transfer technology because every word in every language has a particular frequency. So if you can translate each word from every language into a frequency and then transmit that, transmit that frequency to uh, your brain, you will hear uh, commands in your own language that can usually take the sound of your own voice so that you think it's coming from you or it can be changed to make it sound like the voice of a religious figure, political figure, etc. The silent subliminal presentation system that can beam voices into our heads, which has already been patented for years now. They have been beaming these frequencies at our brains and over our nations for a long time. At this point, there's no way for us to even know if our thoughts are our own. We've got DARPA has a sonic projector that was reported on in 2007, but of course it had been around for quite some time before then. Army has something they call voice to skull. We've got the Air Force using microwaves to create sounds at Brooks Air Force Base. We've got the Marine Corps with their Medusa project. We've got the State Department, as reported by the Washington Post in 2005, working on voices implanted in people's heads. We've got a couple of companies, one that has patented something called Hypersound, that's American Technologies, has also got Holosonic Research Labs, also has a patented version. So the military industrial complex has been all over this. When you see something this wide, this is not just one little research project from one organization. And this is something that five, ten, Years ago, it was being reported on in even mainstream press like the Washington Post, and yet nobody knows about this. Dr. Michael Persinger is a professor of psychology and neuroscience. He is designing ways to put the power of mind control to good use. Dr. Persinger's research focuses on brain trauma, and he uses carefully controlled doses of electromagnetic radiation to induce relaxation and alleviate pain. So uh, what Sandra did was to initiate a opiate releasing pattern that's a burst firing field that um, is stimulated once every four seconds. And that produces relaxation and a very pleasant sensation. Uh, similarly, using the appropriate field, we can induce fear and apprehension, but clearly that would be unethical in that setting. Dr. Persinger's tests suggest that carefully programmed electromagnetic frequencies can tap into individual brains and influence people's emotions. Uh, it was found long ago that if you can put a voice into someone's head, you, you can do several things. If I put a voice that's foreign to your normal thought pattern in your head, that becomes harassment. And the harassment over time will make you display signs of schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. When you go and tell people that you're hearing voices, we've uh, been uh, patterned to turn key, see that as schizophrenia, mm -hmm. and not even look to see if there's a legitimate source for it. Mm -hmm. uh, if I put a voice in your head that's in your voice, and if you pattern a thought, uh, like I tell some of these victims, when you read a book, you're actually hearing your own voice in your head as you read. If I put that voice in your head, then that becomes a thought. Wow. And you'll act on those thoughts, and that's how they think that some of this is being used for subliminal control. Suppose you generate a field that produces fear, fundamental fear, in large numbers of people. And then, over the television, more traditional way. The reason we're having this fear is because of this particular group. And now you start to move the population believing in a direction that you wish. To influence 250 million people, the equivalent of the entire population of the United States, may not be that difficult. According to Dr. Persinger, we already have the technology, satellites and television, and radio transmitters. Mind control may already be happening. 
We know the mysterious PSYOPs plane can beam persuasive sounds and pictures into people's television sets. Will it someday beam disturbing frequencies directly into the mind? Mind control will be the ultimate non-lethal weapon. We're yeah. dealing with a form of technology where you can no longer trust your senses. You can't trust what your eyes see. You can't trust what your ears hear. And more than that, you can't trust what you really believe to be true or false. The agenda behind all of this is to create a society that is robotical, uh, very similar to what you see on the Borg in Star Trek. You know, you report to a computer system, you don't question anything, you don't deviate from your functions, you do what you're told, and uh, there is no uh, independent thinking to do otherwise. They do this to ensure that the culture does not deviate from its agenda uh, through eons of time. Well, I think that, um, you know, the spraying from the air, uh, I mean, I've been to 50 countries over the last 20 years, and um, even when I visit my, my friend, uh, Kredo Mutwa, the Zulu shaman in South Africa near the Kalahari Desert, he look up in the sky and the bloody chemtrails are there. They're everybody where. And there's, a, there, there's um, obviously a reason for that. And one of the things I've learned over this 20 years of research is that there's never one reason for anything. Mm -hmm. um, there are multiple reasons. Part of it is uh, destabilizing the human immune system. Part of it is creating a sub-reality around uh, the planet in, to manipulate the energetic field that we're living in every day. And um, I, I'm absolutely convinced that um, the chemtrails and the manipulation of the lower levels of uh, the uh, energetic field, Earth's energetic field, which we live in and experience all the time, um, is connected in, in, in part to, to the HARP transmissions, um, which, uh, of course, HARP has many, many multiple um, levels of uh, technology and applications, and one of them is literally uh, creating mass uh, fields of thought, which we decode as our own. Um, I had a, a friend in America who um, told me... Um, few weeks ago that she, her husband, um, her uh, son and a son's uh, partner uh, had exactly the same dream about uh, uh, Barack Obama in the same night, um, uh, which was a dream saying that he was a good guy and a wonderful guy and all the rest of it, which, uh, you know, a day's research will show you was a nonsense. But um, and, and, and she said immediately that she felt that some kind of technology had been broadcast and people had picked it up. What they're um, seeking to access is, is the pineal gland um, to, hmm. to literally transmit um, thought, perceptions, dreams um, um, into, your, into your reality. We need to be aware of this because um, not every dream is a, is a premonition of, 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 oh, you know, all the rest of it. They can, they can be... Uh, uh, broadcast out and we can we can uh, decode them and, th and thinking it's a dream we're having when it's actually something we're picking up and that's what's what what part of the the heart system is uh, most people kind of in the back of their mind know there's something going on but uh, it doesn't have anything to do with football or basketball or my paying my rent so I don't want to fool with it it's not mm -hmm. important yeah, but everybody kind of feels there's something going on. Yeah, because most people live in a box, mm -hmm. and they don't want to inside <coughs> the box. No they, doubt about it. They open the lid every so now and again, and just peep outside, and they close it. Yep. Yeah. You, you know, we, we've just got to not let fear get to us, because that's the control system's most potent weapon.